the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Perhaps this story will be hard for you to understand. You might even think it's a bit too sentimental. But keep an open mind, will you? It'll be something to make you think, too. Now let's call this story Old Faithful. Henry, Stumpy, Gray Wolf, and I have been doing a lot of trail riding the last six weeks or so to get the district ready for the influx of tourists. There are many things that have to be done and looked after to make sure that the area is as safe as we can possibly make it for the inexperienced and also the careless visitor. We're riding along, talking over the previous day's work. It's early morning and the horses are frisky. Matilda, you're a rescue. Stop acting like a cold. A lady horse your age shouldn't be so full of pep. <laughs> what matter? She not act like lady horse should. You said it. Stop it now. Teach you to mind your manners. Hey, Bess, oh, behave yourself. Say, do you fellas put something in their oats? <laughs> like what, for instance? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or they sure got a lot of pep in spite of the hard work they've been doing. You're right there, pal. Say, old timer, how's a lady horse Matilda's age supposed to act? Huh? <laughs> well, she ain't supposed to act like no schoolgirl. She should have dignity. Dig, Nettie? What's that? No, oh, don't tell me you don't know what dignity is. Oh, 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 dignity. That is what you said the first time. Well, my tongue got caught in my tooth and I couldn't see what I was seeing. <laughs> <laughs> like Bill always say, you guys kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going today? Check on the black bears, make sure they're in good humor. Oh, uh, yeah. They can get mean. <laughs> Mix in aggressively with... Whoa, 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 Matilda, easy girl. Stumpy, you all right? Yep, I guess so, but my horse ain't. What do you mean? She stepped in a chuck hole. Could tell by the way she fell. Great Scott, you're right. Her left front leg's twisted underneath her. You don't think her leg's broke? I can't tell for sure, but it looks like it's broken. Matildy, we're going to move you so we can take a look at your banged up leg. Ready, fellas? Yeah. Uh, say when. We've got to be quick about this now, so as to get her leg out of the hole with the least amount of pain for her. On the count of three now. One, two, three. <coughs> a little more. That's, that's a little higher. A little more. There. That's good. That's good. <sighs> Easy, girl. Yeah, that was a good job. I don't think it hurt her too much. I hope not. Easy, Matilda, old girl. Easy, girl. Easy now. All right, let's have a look at your leg. Now, I'm not going to hurt you. I can help it. We've got to find out. Easy now. Oh, there, Matilda. Oh, now. We try to help you. Well, what do you think, young feller? That a girl. That's it. You can rest now. I won't bother your leg anymore. Well, say it, will you? It's busted, ain't it? Yes, it's broken, old friend. Fractured in two places. Henry, 
Stumpy, you fellas started making camp. But Bill! You heard me. Yep, I sure did. Come on, Sonny, let's make camp. Well, Gray Wolf and Bill decide what to do about Matilde. They ain't fooling this old codger for one minute. Take it easy, Stumpy. You plenty rough on old timer. After all, it is his horse. Yes, I know, Gray Wolf. It's better to keep Stumpy busy right now, though. Well, you have a point there. What do you think about horse, Bill? What I'm thinking isn't very nice for Matilde or the old timer. Break plenty bad. Take a look for yourself. That chuck hole did a good job. Oh, plenty bad, all right. Broke two places. Um, what would the Indians have done under these circumstances, Graywell? Uh, this bad place for it to happen. Hard to get horse out with thick trees all around. Mm. Indian probably take hunting arrow and put animal out of misery. Even an old and faithful animal like Matilde? Uh, that kindest thing to do. That's what I think, too. We're going to have to shoot her. Uh, Stumpy. Yep. What's the verdict? We're in a bad place for this accident to happen, old-timer. There's no way we can possibly get her out. That is, without clearing a road through this thick stand of trees. If it happened out in the open, we might be able to save her. I uh, guess the only kind thing we can do is shoot her. Shoot her? Uh, Stumpy Matilde is old horse. Her bone's not men good anymore. It's not too good a chance for her. I'm sorry. So am I, Stumpy. Very sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your sympathy, but that ain't going to help my horse none. We got all kinds of fancy dangle machines. We can't help my old horse. She's been a faithful friend all these years. She's saved my life twice. And no, I can't do nothing to save hers. She got a right to live, ain't she? Well, ain't she? Or does being an animal make a difference among human beings? Take it easy, old friend. Yeah, we, we know how you feel, Stumpy. We, we know she's been your good friend these many years and never complained or shirked her duty. I also realize that this is the day of miracle medicines, even for animals, but... Take a look around you, old-timer. How in the name of common sense can, can we get her out of here? Yep. I reckon it's nigh impossible, all right. But you've overcome that before. Ain't, ain't you even going to get a veterinarian here to look at her? Ain't, ain't you even going to try to help her? Sure, old friend. We're going to try, but... On the other hand, do you think it's fair to her to, to make her suffer? If you was Matilde, which would you rather do? Get shot through the head with a revolver? Or suffer a little bit? Wait and see if your busted leg can't be patched up so you can live a little longer? All right, old timer. You win. We'll bring a vet in by copter and... You can be lowered on a cable to the treetops. No, you're talking, Sonny, like your old self. Bill, if this was 25 years ago, I wouldn't argue, but, but this ain't 25 years ago. I understand, old-timer. You better take care of your horse while I set up the radio, huh? <laughs> You understand what you're supposed to do, Amos? Over. Yes, Bill, I do. You want me to pick up Doc Waters and bring him out to you. You'll mark the spot by a smudge fire. And I'm to lower the dock through the trees by cable. Then go back to the heliport and wait for further orders. Over. Good boy. Shake a leg now. This is important. Over. I sure will. 
Tell Stumpy not to give up. They sure do some wonderful things nowadays for banged up animals. Out. Thanks, Amos. Out. How's Matilde? He seems to be comfortable right now. Good. Well, tell Stumpy the doc's on the way. Okay. I'll tell him. Bill to Fire Tower 3. Bill to Fire Tower 3. Over. Tower 3 to Bill. Tower 3 to Bill. How's Matilde? Over. <laughs> you must be sitting there with a the switch open, eh, Tom? Over. <laughs> I don't need my ears to watch for fires. Over. <laughs> you have a point there, all right. Well, Matilda's as good as can be expected. You no doubt know that I'm going to make a smudge fire shortly. Over. Right. You're North 8 and West 6, right? Over. That's a close enough guess. Well, I can't jaw with you now, Tom. Out. I understand. Uh, tell somebody to keep his chin up. Out. Should I start the smudge fire? Yeah, that'll be fine, Henry. Uh, I'll give you a hand clearing a safety area. It's going good now. Should I put the smudge maker on it? Well, let's wait until we hear the copter. Sure. How's the old timer? Kind of down in the dumps. Isn't saying much right now. Mm -hmm. Just looking after his horse and thinking plenty. And that's what worries me. Oh, well, what do you mean? I thought he's doing pretty good. He isn't thinking out loud. Bottling it all up inside. I see what you mean. When he blows his lid, it'll be rough. Yeah. You gotta try and prevent that. Hey, honey. hey, I hear the copter. Let's put the smoke maker on the fire so we can find us. Doc's gear, pal. Right. I got you. Hey, Doc, unhook harness. Okay. <laughs> Sun hook, Gray Wolf. Uh, now, slide out when I hold steady. Right. <laughs> Let her go. <laughs> uh, this is some experience for me, fellas. I made a lot of calls for various and sundry means of transportation, but, hell, this beats all. It is a bit unusual, all right, Doc. Um, where is the injured horse? Uh, over this way, uh, Stumpy's with her. It's his horse. Yeah, so I understand. Uh, too bad. But we'll have a look at her and see what we can do. Do you think you can save her? Well, I don't know, Henry. Oh, hello, Stumpy. Howdy, Doc. Well, there she is, all busted up. Her leg, that is. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> now, e e easy now, young lady. We'll have a look at this fractured leg of yarn and see if we can do something for you. Yeah, yeah, easy now. Well, I'm through for the time being, girl. Take it easy now, Matilda. Well, what's the verdict, Doc? Uh, not good, old-timer. The leg's fractured in two places. No, don't tell me. You come all the way out here just to tell me that. You're not telling me anything I don't already know. Can you save her, can't you? Yep, I can save her, but uh, not here. What's that mean? Well, it means unless you can get her out of here and back to the hospital where I can put her in a sling and pin splint her leg, she'll have to be shot. But how about her age? She ain't no spring chicken, you know. Well, uh, her age is a disadvantage, but that don't make the job impossible. Yep, if you can get her out of here, I'll fix her up. Alrighty, I'll get her out of here if I have to carry her on my back. Uh, much obliged for the supper, fellas. It was fine. Don't mention it, Doc. Well, gentlemen, we have a problem. Uh, Doc. Hey, up, Bill. Can you give the horse a sedative to ease her pain and let her sleep? Sure, by all means. But, uh, what I'm gonna give her is mighty powerful. You mean repeated doses might kill her? Yep, repeated doses of the same strength would. How long will the first dose last? Oh, from 10 to 12 hours. That means we've got to get her out of here in the dark, tonight. Yep. The longer we wait, the worse it'll be for her. Well, you speak truth. I'm going to go give her the hypo now. You fellows make up your minds what you're going to do. 
We can't let that horse suffer any longer. Bill? Yes, old friend? I heard one time about some fellers rustling cattle by carrying them out with a sling and a helicopter. That's right. It's a fact, Stumpy. Why can't we do that with Matilda? Well, uh, you forget one thing. What's that? The cattle were standing up. Not dead weight lying down. Huh. That knocks that idea into a cocked hat. And I thought you had the answer, Stumpy. Well, now, don't go stepping all over your own feet, young feller. Huh? How are we going to get her into a sling? We'll make a hoist by using a long pole and a stump as a lever to jack her up high enough to get the sling on her. The word of a jig will pick her up and tow her back to the hospital. Hey, what do you think of that, fellas? Well, that's sound good enough to try. Yeah, you said it. Let's talk it over with Doc Waters. If he says okay, we'll do it. Whoopee! Kick the jet up, Matilde! We ain't through yet! What do you say, Doc? Oh, I say it sounds uh, good enough to try it. Will it hurt the horse? No, she won't feel a thing, not a thing. She's out like a light right now. This stuff is fast and effective, you know. Now, uh, we got to be careful the broken bones don't pierce a blood vessel. If that happens, we'll have to apply a tourniquet. Nope, I don't see any problems from my side of the picture. The problems are all yours, fellas. I, well, I hope it works. Well, you heard the man... What are we waiting for? It's getting late in the afternoon. <laughs> you fellas start rigging the lever hoist while I radio instructions. Then I'll help you get everything ready. Let's get to work. Hey, what have you guys been dreaming up out there? You sound like wild men. Over. <laughs> Never mind, wise guy. You haven't got a horse with a broken leg. Over. <laughs> no, but I'm liable to have a helicopter with a busted motor. Okay, what do you want me to do? Over. First of all, get a sling from Doc Waters' place and load it down to us. Over. How will you mark the spot? Over. Bonfire. You know the general direction. And hang around a while. Or you can land if you wish in the clearing to... Wait until we're ready to have you lift the horse and carry you to Doc Waters Hospital. Over. Okay. Say, have you ever seen the gasoline trademark of the flying red horse? Over. <laughs> sure. What's that got to do with this? Over. <laughs> ah, that's just a picture. This is for real. The flying black horse and the sick bay sling. <laughs> Over. <laughs> Listen, clown, get moving, will you? We haven't got all night. the stump all set. He's got a notch in the top of it. What do you mean? Well, this stump that's as tall as Henry acts as a fulcrum, and we make sort of a trough in the top for the lever to rest in. Oh, he do a good job of high cutting. He sure did. Well, this skinny tree is clean to branches and ought to make a good lever pole. Good job, Gray Wolf. All right, let's set it up on the stump and into the notch. Say when. Wait, uh, let me tie a line on the end of this log. It's going to be up in the air a bit. There. Now let me give you fellas a hand. You need some muscle to lift this. <laughs> when we get it up high enough, drop it on his head, fellas. <laughs> Good idea. He talk like we not have muscle. <laughs> you know, for once I'm glad. Really glad to hear Stumpy pull off one of his corny <laughs> remarks. <laughs> Me too, pal. All right, let's get this pole in place on the count of three. One, 
two, three. Little more. All right, I'll let her down. That's good. That almost looks like a teeter totter with one end sticking up. What next? Now we run this rope that's hanging from the high end under that big heavy log. Hook it onto the sapling over there, and we've tied its head to the ground. When we're ready to hoist Matilda, we cut the sapling, and it'll help lift her up. Uh, go on that again. Well, we've made a big teeter-totter dock. At one end, the horse will be attached. At the other high end is a rope. It comes down to the ground and under that big log. Henry stripped it down to the slippery underbark. Then the rope is attached to that strong sapling that's bent over. When we let the sapling go, it pulls the rope that slips under the log and pulls down the end of the long pole. Well, we pull on the rope, too. The other end comes up and lifts the horse. Sounds good to me. Uh, Doc, why the peculiar look on your face? Well, I've been enjoying the education of making a hoist out of raw material. However, the thoughts occurred to me... Uh, how are you going to attach the horse to the log so it'll be lifted up? Well, old-timer? You know the answer as well as I do, Sonny. <laughs> okay. We're going to make a temporary sling out of rope. We'll slide it under and attach it to the lung. However, it would shut off some of her blood supply if we used it too long. So we'll wait for the regular sling, which won't hurt her over the long period of carrying her to town. <laughs> hey, you win. Hey! <laughs> I can see the copter's landing lights flickering through the trees. Let's soup up the bonfire. We're ready, Grey Wolf. You can release the sapling any time. Oh, I cut rope now. There she goes! <laughs> well, that's fine. Let's get the regular sling onto our Prado. There she is, all set for a ride in the flying machine. Boy, your ideas sure work fine, Stumpy. You don't count your poultry before they're hatched, young feller. Is she still out, Doc? Sure, Bill, you got lots of time yet. All right, uh, I'll call Amos and have him move into position. Even he didn't go home. He didn't go home, old friend. Just sit down somewhere to conserve gas, huh? That's fine, Amos. Hold it right there and lower your cable. Okay, Bill, here it comes. Have you got enough light? Plenty. Your landing lights and the bonfire give us plenty of light. I can see the cable end now. Make sure the hook safety pin is in place. We don't want any accidents after going this far. Right. Got the hook now. Hold tight for a few minutes. You'll have to take the dock up first. Okay. Up you go, Doc. Take real good care of her, will you, Doc? She's the best friend the feller ever had. Ah, don't worry, old-timer. When you get back to town, I'll have her all prettied up for you. I take care of all sick and injured animals, you know, like it was my own. Thanks! Well, looks like I'm going back to town the same way I come. See you fellas later. So long, Doc. So long, Doc. Bye. Bye. Take her up slowly, Amos. Okay. Up she comes. Look at that, will ya? He's lifting her just like a bird. Hey, she's gonna hit that treetop. Amos, stop the winch. What's wrong? Bring your copter a little to the right. How's that? Fine. He's up now. She's heading toward the other tree. He'll never get her through. Hold it, Amos. Okay, what now? A little to your left. Just a little. She might clear. Hey, Matilde's moving up there. You're seeing shadows from the bonfire. I am not. Look. She's coming out of the sedative. Let her down, Amos. Then you'll have to lower Doc Waters down, too. Okay. But we'd better make it the next try. 
And I'm going to run out of gas. Poor old Matilde. Doc, you take care of the horse. You fellas help him. All right, Bill. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to top those two trees. You can't do that in the dark. It's too risky. It's tough enough in the daylight. I'll be all right. We've got to get Matilde out or bust. You heard Amos tell me he hasn't too much gas left. When he comes back this time, we've got to make it. I'm not right. But I not let you top two trees. I top one. Okay, if you want to. No, wait a minute, you young whippersnappers. I ain't letting you risk your lives for the sake of my old horse or young horse. I admit that she's been my good friend a long time and all that sort of stuff, but... She's lived a good life, had good care. I'll, I'll miss her like old get out if we have to leave her here, but that's what I'll do. You, you fellas have showed me that there ain't no other way. Uh, Gray Wolf, are you hard of hearing? Uh, almost deaf like stone. Let's top those trees for two old faithful friends of ours, huh? Uh. I hear plenty of good when you talk. Easy does it, Amos. Fine. Fine. You're clear of the treetops now. All right, take off. Doc gave her a smaller dose this time. Out. Okay. Boy, am I glad we made it this time. You know something? I feel real good about this whole thing. Thanks for asking me to help. You fellas are okay in my book. I'll make sure she gets to town safe and sound. Out. Say, old timer, this is no time to get wet eyes. It's all over. Yeah, come on, old friend. Take it easy. Hey, I'm just... Thinking how fortunate Matilda and I are that you fellas are willing to do so much for two old friends. Yes, sir. This makes up for all the years of hard work. And that's how it happened, boys and girls. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger!